In this chapter, we're going to be talking about communities and community detection. So when you hear the word community, you probably think of maybe a tight-knit group of people that uh, mainly interact with each other. You can probably think of different examples of what you consider to be a community. And so what we're going to do in this chapter is give a more formal definition for what a community is in a graph and talk about a couple of examples. So one of the interesting cases in the world where you have distinct communities is actually in the country of Belgium. So in Belgium, it's almost split down the middle that um, half of its citizens are Flemish and speak Dutch, and 40% are Walloons who speak French. And so one of the questions is how does this country foster peaceful coexistence of these two groups? Because Belgium is actually a pretty densely knitted society, and it doesn't really matter if you're Flemish or not. So to give you an idea, if you're not familiar with the size of Belgium, it's about the same area as Massachusetts and about the same population as Ohio. So in 2007, Vincent Blondell and his students developed an algorithm to identify the underlying structure of Belgium. And so they used the mobile phone network and placed individuals next to whom they regularly called on their phone. So the algorithm revealed, you can see here, that Belgium's social network is broken into two large clusters of communities, and individuals in these clusters rarely talk with individuals from the other clusters. Once they assigned people to sections of the graph by language spoken, you could really see that one cluster is exclusively French and the other is exclusively Dutch speaking. And so there are lots of different examples of communities and I'm sure that you can think of some and you'll have some time to discuss them in your discussion post for this week. One very famous example of a community that was studied is what's called Zachary's Karate Club. So back in the 70s, there was this karate club that was studied by a guy named Wayne Zachary. He spent a long time as an anthropologist studying the members of this group. And you'll read more about it in the paper that I've given you for your assignment, but the basic idea is that there was a conflict among the members of the club, and that conflict resulted eventually in a split of the club. And so what Zachary discovered was he could make some kind of predictions using network theory about who would end up in which community after the split. And actually, the Karate Club paper is a very famous paper in social network analysis. See that it's been cited a lot of different times. And the first scientist at any conference on networks who uses Zachary's Karate Club as an example is inducted into what's called the Zachary Karate Club Club and is given a little prize. And so it's kind of silly, but it's a point of pride among the social network researchers. So we can see that communities are both tightly knit and also sometimes coexist with other communities inside of a network. And so based on observations about the people or companies in the network, we can detect these communities and maybe predict if there's going to be a split or who might end up in which group if there is such a split. So let's talk a little bit more about communities in a formal way. Communities fall on the mesoscopic spectrum, so somewhere in between the microscopic and the macroscopic, just right in the middle, so not at the individual level and not at the high level, but right in the middle. And communities have a property of connectedness, and so a community corresponds to what we call a connected subgraph. So if you think about a graph over here, a subgraph is just a graph within a graph. So you can see that this graph has two distinct connected subgraphs, and they're actually quite dense. So the density, meaning that if we take a look at this subgraph here, we can see that the nodes are pretty heavily connected, so they share a lot of different connections. So communities correspond to locally dense neighborhoods of a network. We also have something that we refer to as a click. So a community qualifies as a click if it is a complete subgraph. So in other words, we have all possible edges connected. So everyone in the network or everyone in that community is connected to everyone else in that community. 
So we could have a situation like this that's actually located within a larger graph. That would be a click within that graph. So typically in social networks, we'll see a lot of triangles. So groups of three that are completely connected. Larger clicks are actually pretty rare, and so they're significant when they do come up. And so communities don't necessarily correspond all the time to complete subgraphs because many of the nodes won't link directly to each other, but you'll still have fairly dense connections. So, so far we have touched on what constitutes a community, what constitutes a click, so a complete subgraph within a graph. The next thing we want to address is the difference between a strong community and a weak community. So in a strong community, we have a case where each node in that community has more links within the community than it does with the rest of the graph. So here we have, if we just focus on these five nodes, a strong community because they have more links within each other than they do with the rest of the graph. So the definition for a weak community is actually a little bit different. We have a case where the total internal degree of the community exceeds its total external degree. So this requirement is actually a little less intense than the requirement for being a strong community. So where we just look at the community as a whole, so if we take the sum of the degree of all the nodes within the community, and it's greater than the degree connections that it has outside of the community, it's still considered a community, but it is weak. And so we have a case where a click is a strong community and a strong community is also a weak community, but we don't have the reverse. In your assignment, you're going to be using an algorithm to detect communities in Zachary's Karate Club network. And there are a lot of different community detection algorithms out there. We're not going to go into detail, but if you would like more details, you can take a look at the rest of chapter nine. But one of the simplest ways is to just make a partition of nodes in the graph. So we just divide the network into different groups of nodes so that each node belongs to one group. And we have this bell number that indicates the number of possible partitions of a particular number of nodes. So what we want to do this week is really focus on the case of Zachary's Karate Club and have you explore a little bit about communities from that perspective.